Okay, welcome to this lesson on graphing square root functions. Square root functions are the latest in a series of parent functions that we will study this semester. Now, I really recommend that you listen first to each example and do not take notes until I tell you to copy everything down. This is the square root parent function. It is f of x is equal to the square root of x, or you can always write it with a y instead of the uh, f of x. Now, to graph a square root function, you really have to be able to identify the domain and range, because that tells you where you start and, uh, in many cases, where you end. So to find the domain, uh, you have to, or, and the range of a square root function, you have to determine the point of origin. In other words, we're looking for the coordinate where it starts. Now you can see that in this case, it starts at 0, 0. It's the parent function. So it makes sense that it would start at the origin. Now, once you find where it starts, I really recommend for a good visual that you draw a line like this, like this thick red line. It doesn't have to be thick, but you're going to draw a line where it starts and direct the line in the direction that your parent function is, or, or your square root function is going. And we can see that this one is going to the right. Uh, so now, we know the direction of the arrow. The arrow is going to the right. Now I'm talking about the function here. Uh, but also I'm talking about the direction of the arrow on your line that indicates domain. So it starts at zero and it goes to the right forever to positive infinity. Now using interval notation, we're going to write that domain as zero comma infinity. We don't really have to put the positive in front of infinity. Uh, if it's negative, of course, we have to put that negative sign, but it defaults to positive. Now, we used square brackets because the point 0, x equals 0, is included in this function. But infinity is just a concept. It's not a real number. And so anytime we're talking infinity or negative infinity, we always use parentheses to indicate the interval is open. Now that takes care of domain, but what about range? Well, range depends on the arc of the graph. Now we can see that this graph is arcing up. And so we can determine from this graph that the range starts at y equals 0. So we're going to draw a line with an arrow for the range. And then based on that, we determine that it starts at 0 and goes up to infinity. Then using interval notation, we write the range of 0, comma, infinity. Again, 0 is included in this interval, so we use the square bracket. But anytime we're talking infinity or negative infinity, we use parentheses. Pause now and copy everything down on this slide along with any questions you might have. Let's take a look at this next square root parent function, the square root of x plus 1 and then minus 3. Now, following our, our rules from before, we're going to find the point of origin and we can see that it is negative 1 and negative 3. Now we're going to determine uh, what our domain is by drawing an thick arrow where the domain starts and going in the direction of our function. And we see that it starts at negative 1 and goes on to infinity. And so using interval notation, we include negative 1 in our interval and go all the way up to infinity. The range works the same way, only this time we're looking at the arc. We see that it's arcing up and it starts the range the y value of the origin point is negative 3. That's where the range starts. And so it starts at negative 3 and goes up. Using interval notation, we would write it as negative 3 with a square bracket because it's included, all the way up to infinity with a parentheses. Pause now 
and copy everything on this slide along with any questions you might have. We'll do one more example and call it a day. Here we have a square root function that's been reflected by this negative sign over the x-axis. So we have negative square root of x minus 3. Well, the fact that it's been reflected doesn't change our process at all. We're going to determine the origin point. And this one is 3, 0. So x equal 3, y equals 0. We're going to draw our line to indicate where our domain starts and which direction it's going in. And we see that it starts at 3 and goes on up to infinity. That means that our domain is 3 comma infinity. All right, now the range depends on the arc of the graph. Now we can see that this graph is arcing down. All right, so our range then starts at 0 at the y value of the origin point and goes down to negative infinity. Well, rate, uh, domain and range are always written low to high. So I determined that it starts at 0 and goes down. And so my range is negative infinity. And we, we put that first because it's the low value. And because we're talking about infinity, we use the parentheses, comma, 0, and the square bracket. Pause now and copy everything on this slide, including any questions you might have. Come to class prepared to use your notes in order to complete class activities and make sure that you bring any questions you might have.